Okay, and a very warm welcome now as the room fills out. Who do I have? I have the wonderful John Waters on again now for the 18th time, and we're discussing a number of different topics. I think we're going to start it off with uh, John running for the European elections. That's upcoming. That's absolutely wonderful news. And already the feedback that he's getting, it's causing a nice little bit of energy there. And I think a lot of people are going to get behind John, and his chances look very, very favorable. Um, also, thanks very much there to any of the people there that share out the video. I could see actually online recently, the numbers are increasing um, into very, very tasty numbers there at the moment. So this conversation is getting out. One of our last streams had well over uh, 330 viewers. So I'd like to ask people to share, 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 and let's get this out. Maybe 400, 500 numbers there watching live would be fantastic. So good evening. Nice to see you. To see you nice, John. Hello, James. How are you doing? Nice to be with you again. Absolutely wonderful. Well, so as we're going to be talking about all politics, first off, I think it's worthwhile to start off on an old quote there from Plato that said there, one of the penalties for refusing to participate in politics is you end up being governed by your inferiors. Yeah, that's a good one, yeah. Um, well, we've, we're well used to that, James, you know, so uh, um, it's time to, that's, that's actually a way of putting it in a certain sense, because what what we have been governed by are basically you know our enemies you know it, it's not our, even just our inferiors these are people who hate ireland hate the irish people hate everything about us and want to change it want to be eradicated as you actually would think you know and so this is yeah very much why i'm talking why i i have decided to 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 take part in this election and and you know i was approached over a period by, by in people down the west uh, who are you know basically people who are involved in farming and fishing and uh, you know turf cutting and those kind of essential activities which are under threat those uh, existential threat and that threat of course extends to the entire population because these are the fundamental you know uh, heat and energy and food and all those things that keep humanity alive and it could be nothing could be more kind of fundamental than that and so i i kind of for all kinds of reasons including the fact that i had said over many over the last four years after i ran in in, in that dunleary in the last general election i said i would never again uh, one in, in not because of a, for, for election but not, not because i lost or i didn't get elected i mean i didn't expect to get elected there uh i got nearly a thousand votes which was astonishing to me uh but uh uh you know I, I just felt at the time that that's it like the whole thing and uh, you know when you see white men in white vans collecting vo uh polling boxes you know you start to wonder like what the hell is going on and but I, I i was convinced by these people eventually that and particularly in the context of the referendums of march 8th uh that they, they put it to me the last the, the penultimate time we met to discuss this they they put it to me look uh, let's decide after let, you can decide after the results of the referendum and they were very confident that it would be a no no i was as relatively but i thought it would be marginal and I, I didn't foresee so that was such a dramatic moment that i really had to sit back and, and think about it and they were very convincing uh, that i had a very good chance given all the circumstances given the fact that i would be running now this time in my own heartland you know in the west of ireland and, and Connacht and in roscommon and sligo and Mayo, Galway, those counties that I grew up in and going round in and knew lots of people in. And, and of course, you know, the, up the country, Longford and so on, Monaghan. I know there are people in those areas. I've been up there lots of times. So, yeah, this was like, you know, oh, this is different. So I, I decided to do that. But I fundamentally decided on that question, you know, that, you know, it's a little bit like, you know, you often hear bands talking about music or, you know, and they 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 always give they offer the offer they the reason for why they started the band as they wanted to make music that they didn't get to hear, you know that nobody was playing. I remember you two saying something like that at the time of the Joshua Tree, I said that we wanted to play songs that no we we wanted to hear but nobody was making, and I kind of wanted kind of make speeches in the European Parliament that nobody's making, you know, and 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 maybe you know go in there and start describing. Uh, uh, Ursula van der Leyen for what she is, a totalitarian and make it clear that that's my position and I wanted to stop and I, I would at that point presumably have votes in my pocket whereas she hasn't and could she please leave the stage and let us speak about what we have been elected to say and to do uh, 
rather than her, ter- her telling us what the deal is, you know, and, and so on. And going outwards from there then to all the issues that will come to mind then in the context of all that, including uh, the, the, the food and fuel issues, the car- you know, carbon issues, so-called uh, uh, mass migration issues, you know, existential issues in all, every one of them. Uh, which, you know, this is not, I'm not looking for a career in politics. I hate the word politics at this stage after the last four years in particular, the, the betrayals and the treason of our elected representatives. Uh, they're, 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 they're turning on their own people. They're basically mass murdering of their own people. They're, they're uh, uh, you know, contempt. They're, they're complete hostility. Uh, you know, I want to actually go as myself as well as representing my people. I want to go and say enough of this already. We're we're not going to take. We're mad as hell, and we're not going to take it anymore. And we're not joking this time. And uh, so that's that's kind of what I, I I basically why I've decided to do it. It's uh, you know not something I thought I would see myself doing again. And I'm not especially looking forward to the campaign aspects of it. Uh, but I certainly am looking forward to going to wherever it is, Strasbourg and Brussels, and telling those guys what I think of them. As they say, no better buccal. And of course, I'd imagine you're looking there for people to help you with canvassing around those areas. Uh, yes. No, I have a team. Now, Sean Wynn down in Drumshambo is, is kind of coordinating all that. I'm not directly involved in that because I have another issue on at the moment, which is transfixing me. It's a libel action being taken against me, which comes to court in the last week in April. And that's really preoccupying me on, you know, until the end of the month. Uh, but I, I, you know, I'm, I'm doing things. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, doing videos and all that kind of stuff. Or going to helping to get things off the ground. And we'll have five weeks after that then to really give it, a, you know. But meanwhile, Sean and in, Indram Shambo is is organising all that. And you know, there's a kind of a good developing network all over the constituency now of canvassers and people who are, you know, I'm amazed and really you know, astonished and and very very proud really to 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 find that so many people want me to run and want me to win and uh, you know i'm astonished to even be around dublin and be approached by people who think they can vote for me ah. and, and are disappointed to learn that they they can't that they're going to have to move to kildare as i tell them you know do you have any cousins in kildare that you could yeah. move in with that, and, you know, you know and it I mean? wasn't that long ago that when the people were approach, approaching in around dublin there was the lycra brigade and as you it say was, yeah. it was Oh, yeah. you're about to be hit with some diatribe. They like you know, it. He started speeding up to make sure he had a good bit of momentum to get away from yeah, them before that's, right. that, that's kind of eased off a bit now, uh, Jim. Not entirely gone. I think, you know, I mean, the Lake Relays, yeah, they don't bother to me so much, but there's a little bit of that, you know, yet. And I suppose I'll get a lot of that. You know, the, you find that there's an uptake of that kind of stuff whenever you try to do anything or say anything. Uh, and like, that's inevitable, you know. Because we do live in a, in a lawless country now. Let's be honest about it. You know that that the, the, these there are so many thugs out there on the highways and byways working for the government and getting paid their stipend every month for doing that, for closing down discussion, for closing down opponents, uh, adversaries, critics, uh, questioners. You know that uh, we have to be mindful that we don't any longer live in a democratic uh, uh, country. Yeah. But but. You know, there is a moral law which is higher than the law that has been flouted. And that law is the one I appeal to and it's the one I speak from in the sense that I, I don't... Uh, I, if I'm approached by a, a member of a police force or a judiciary or whoever it might be who I know to be breaking the law, I don't give them any heed whatsoever. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And with all these issues, they are, as we know, they're global issues. So. They seem to be uh, particularly um, penetrating and pervasive in around the West. So we've got massive levels of inflation. They're all the way from America. They're over to Ireland. And we're still feeling the effects. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, that's that's about to blow, James, I think. You know, it's hard to say when. We've been talking about this for three years. uh, But undoubtedly, now we're in the end game of the currencies of the West. Dollar, the, the, the... euro the pound etc like they're in in dire trouble now and uh, it's it's really only a matter of uh when uh, as opposed to if and I, my strong suspicion is it will definitely happen this year uh, yeah. i wouldn't be surprised if it happened sometime around october because they will try to orchestrate it to happen just before the election in the united states because they're trying to create chaos for yeah. that that's their plan i mean if they yeah. can't if they can't manage World War Three, then a currency crisis would probably 
do for the moment, you know. Uh, and, and interesting, interesting, you know, for really on that moment, uh, on that point, is now they're saying, of course, that's all these CNNs and, you know, NS, NBCs and all these different corporate medias that were all joining together there to attack Trump. And I don't want to get into this and these different sides, really, because they're all puppeticians, really, at this stage, anyway, that's been put forward. But that is actually changing now. CNN, it showed a clip. There was a guy there, I, I, I came across the stream, that they were saying that Trump now has been spoken about in the corporate media as a guy that's better than Biden to fix uh, the levels of inflation. And also now they're uh, leaving people talk out that if they start going for some of Trump's their properties, that it's going to make him a martyr and that he's going to be shoot up in the polls. So just different information is actually getting out. While all the while uh, they're leaving him creep out, they're talking about letting him say that the damage done by the UBI and, of course, all the... Uh, uh, you know, these different, you know, climate change policies and also different information is now leaking out that a lot of this money that's supposed to be going over to your so-called Ukraine is actually being funneled into defense contractors that are owned by our very good old friend there, Finky there, you know, from BlackRock. Yes, well, that's right. I mean, he basically he's the emperor of all the world, and and uh, you know, nobody even most people don't even know his name, you know, uh, and uh, which is the name. I don't know what's this. It means something very quite disreputable, anyhow. I think uh, uh, I must look it up. You would know that, James. You're a man of, of a literary and and. Uh, and uh, great learning in that respect. I think does it mean something like uh, I don't know, uh, coward or or slinky kind of you know. Mm nasty piece of work you know whatever anyway uh, yeah i you know this is this is so true you know and and the, the thing about the trump thing i've always said about the trump thing is that what's interesting about trump is not trump particularly uh, except as a reflection of something else and that something else is the people that he has awoken in america which is kind of pretty much effectively in effect uh, 50 percent of the population who had been sidelined and dismissed and, and patronized and and ignored for 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 so long and now they are awakened and they are you know a force to be reckoned with and that's the interesting thing so you know he is what he is and and you know he, he's a he's a extraordinary phenomenon given that he is the target or the the object of that affection and it is affection uh, mm -hmm. And then has to be recognised and has to be admired. There are problems with him. I mean, there are questions I have about some of the recent things he's done the last four years in relation to the vaccines and so on. Yeah. But I, but I mean, you know, you would want to be crazy at this point to think that anybody else would be preferable to Trump at this stage. Anybody on the on the pitch at the moment mm -hmm. is would be preferable to Trump. I mean, it, we, it has to happen. But I'm convinced that for that very reason they will not allow it to happen that they will come up with a stunt whether it's war or martial law or chaos you know burning cities whatever they will come up with it and they can do it so that's you know we have to wait it's seven months we're getting very close um this this is a pivotal year for sure this is the, the year when and all the more reason why i want to you know go go out there and be on the pitch myself and, and when this thing comes down, because, you know, it's a very interesting thing, James, you know, I had a, a sort of an insight in the last few days in relation to media and all that. And, you know, I come from the mainstream background, you know, I worked for 30 years in the media, 35 years and 24 of those in the Irish Times with the columnists and so on. Um, and on RTE every other night and on the, every other morning and so on. That's your name. Yeah. You're a household name, John. Yeah. yeah. But but now you see, here I am. And 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 I find myself in this bizarre situation. One of the conditions I made to my, as it were, I call them my sponsors. They're not my sponsors because they don't have any money either. But uh, you know, the, the point is that I say to them, like, well, look, I I I'll do this, but I I I I don't want to be on the mainstream media. And and that that's not like just vindictiveness. I mean, it is vindictiveness as well, but it's not just vindictiveness. It's that what do you talk about when you're talking to the people who orchestrated this pseudo reality for four years, who told lies from morning till night, who described us as conspiracy theorists and anti vaxxers and domestic terrorists and all this, and allowed that to happen, who didn't call us up and ask us for a perspective on any of this, who, when we were running, myself and Jim O'Doherty were running our constitutional action, not one journalist 
called up to say, can I look at your papers? Can you send me your submissions? You know, what are you saying? No, they just attacked, attacked, attacked. So like, what do I go on now and talk to those people about and pretend that none of this happened? Is that, is that what the scenario would be? Like, I, I don't think so. Like, cause you know, we're, we're, we live in two different worlds, James, you know, they and I, you know, I live in a world that is, you know, be under attack, it's at war and they're the other, other side. And they're going around pretending that they're living in 2019. You know, uh, I can't buy into it and, and won't. And so, uh, you know, I, I don't know what we're going to do because apparently they have a statutory obligation, James, to actually interview me, uh, yeah. according to the Broadcasting Authority. If I'm a candidate, they have to give me time. So I suppose they're going to have to do what they used to have to do, or to used to have to do with Jerry Adams, is get an actor to recite his words on screen. You know, they'll find some quote from me and, and get the actor to say it. And that's going to be great for them to watch. Yeah. Well, of course, at that stage, how many people really that are awake are going to be watching? Because as we can see, we were just talking before the stream started, the numbers are starting really to shoot up and these alternative media and socialist media sites where information is getting out. And we know now, because we can see by the, even the numbers there out on the street, it's worth mentioning fair play to the people from around the borough of Kulak recently. It was wonderful to see them to get out in this inclement weather. And there was men, women, there was children, and you could see that morale looked high. And they were holding up lots of signs and they were giving out definite statements. Just no more. We will uh, we're, we want to stop the plantation. We want yes. to look after the level of safety uh, in our area. And it, it's wonderful to start to see that more and more in different areas. But especially, I think, in these densely populated areas, John, you know, really, because they can get massive numbers very, very quickly. And it's yes. a well, little, little organization. Like that has been a really escalating since say the beginning of last year in you know in, in east wall and in, in yeah. all these places you know and uh, for moy and all kinds of different places uh but it has had a seismic lift since the referendums i believe in on march the 8th because that was the day when the F absent quality from our culture the the culture that was sucked out of it by the corruption of the media which was connectivity of thought that was re was restored in a certain sense where people like myself or like everybody i kind of thought we might win that or maybe one one of them you know by a sh she just shaded and then one day uh, that day i was at a wedding and a friend from back in roscommon rang me and and just said like he says it's, it's an overwhelming no vote you know and i couldn't believe it i nearly fainted on the spot and 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 that tells you that secretly in our hearts all of us had been carrying these kind of forbidden thoughts yeah. And then the moment came in that corner of the polling booth where we could crouch over that high desk, you know, and the pencil, the butt of a pencil tied to the to the to the to the to a nail or whatever on the table and then make your X. That it struck me, this is this is the last vestige of the Irish Republic here. Mm -hmm. And 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 in that sort of single vote, which you might call a kind of a whisper of of refusal, that became a loud roar of refusal which was heard all over the world and people then suddenly say it's not just me it's every yeah. everybody everybody knows this is happening everybody i thought i was on, the only one and that's what's happening i think now there is this kind of exponential dimension which we always kind of knew would happen but we didn't know how or when and they through they gave us the opportunity the creeps gave us the opportunity on a plate they delivered it as though they had planned it. I mean, in a certain sense, you have to be almost suspicious. Did they did they set us up? No, no, no. They are stupid. I always said they were stupid, and they gave it to us on a plate. So now we have to take advantage. And that's another reason why, or another way of putting why I, I decided to, to accept the invitation or the challenge. That, you know, there won't there may not be another chance. You know, people have been saying to me, you know, well, why didn't you wait for the, the general election? But I say, what well, the general election hasn't been announced yet. The European election is announced. Um, you know, the, the general election could be any time in the next 12 months. And by then, that energy may be dissipated again by all kinds of things. Who knows what's going to happen? So this, you know, strike while the iron is hot, you know, uh, and it is hot. So let's go. Like, you know, and also the European Parliament is not no small thing. You know, it, it, it can be made. So the only reason it's insignificant is because 
that people who are elected to it disappear for five years every time they the once the count is over they're gone and you never see them or hear from them again i don't intend that to be so in my case i intend to use that platform to be to be being back into ireland you know the truth about what's been happening to us and to the world and beamed outwards as well i hope so that the world can actually understand that ireland has returned to its what you might call its uh, moralist moral uh, stature old moral stature which goes back to people like frank aiken back in the 60s and uh, before like where they were uh, working in the united nations as you know which when it was in a relatively or we thought a decent uh, body uh, uh you know and working to to establish you know the non proliferation nuclear non-proliferation treaty and in that time you know irish politicians were decent honorable respectable people they weren't creeps they weren't perverts you know like we have now yeah. and mm -hmm. and so uh, uh that that is what i would like to be in europe uh to continue that tradition uh you know and and to to make ireland <laughs> if i may say so great again yeah yeah and uh it's not following on it'd be a lot better of course we have a couple of irish representatives there you have the daily one there right beside wallace wallace he always reminds me of a fella there that you'd see outside a pub there before it opens there you know waiting to get into an early house and daily on about oh she's wonderful to talk about the ukraine and palestine but while the irish people are under jackboot of tyranny not a mention whatsoever Nothing. and then when you were saying of course coming off as uh, being good representatives of ireland you did have the ming fella there he was in his boxer shorts there if, uh, if you remember he was he actually was he was doing a video there and uh, they could see uh, you could see that he was in his boxer shorts so uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I... Low Ming, yeah. Ming is a kind of a tragic story. I I, I know Ming going back because he's from the same town as myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, I I always had a you know a soft spot for Ming. I, I liked him personally, and and uh, you know, obviously we, there was a lot of things we didn't agree about, but we we got on very civilly together. You know, in any time we met, and I back in 2011, I actually wrote supportively of him when he was running for the doll that time. And he was saying some really good and interesting things, you know, about the necessity to revive local economies and, and treat some towns, small towns around Ireland, which remains a, a critical issue and would be certainly for me a critical issue uh, henceforth if we if we can get a new start at all. Uh, but then he went to Europe and, he, you know, he, he, he talked about the turf thing and so for a while, but then he just seemed to kind of clam up and disappear underground you know and i know there was that list recent controversy about his aide who had you know done an appalling thing about sending out a message that he in his name which was really offensive and and, and must have been extraordinarily hurtful to, to him and his family I, I totally get that and i can understand how that would have winded them for a while but you know i i don't know i i i i, I do think that he, i always felt that he was somebody of ireland you know and that he had that personality and that uniqueness about him. And it was pretty, you know, he just seemed to lean too far in the one direction. And also, I think he was too, he was too, too concerned about what the Dublin media had to say about him. You know, that's an awfully, that's a terrible defect. I've got over that a long time ago, as you might have noticed, and I don't give two figs what they think of me. Uh, in fact, the more they attack me, the more I delighted it now, James, uh, you know, and uh, yeah. uh, so I hope they do. Now, I hope they don't hold back and not attack me because, you know, that would be damaging. Any publicity is good publicity. Well, that's and just that's that, it. You know, you know, you know, if you, if if there if people like that are attacking you, you must be doing something right or saying something right, you know. And so the only worry I have now is that they'll desist for the duration of the campaign, you know, and 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 uh, that I won't be demonized by them this time, which would be a great change, a great sudden lurch, uh, radical change on their part. Don't be giving them there any hints, you know, because we know uh, all these probates and miscreants there to go out to attack you. And you mentioned, of course, what's going on, uh, you know, in the West and over so long i think that people have been so disenfranchised you know what's happening and coming out of the dublin centric government because they don't have any representation you know in the west so it's, well, it's a yeah, serious well, that, out there to, to cultivate votes that, that was one of my key teams going yeah. back to 1990 when i joined the irish times when it was a good newspaper uh, back then and uh you know that was uh, you know i i i consistently wrote about the neglect of the west 
and the, the suction, the way that the, the that all of the energy and all of the resources were being sucked into the cities, particularly Dublin, which had become, as John Healy said, an engorged head on an emaciated body, which, which was yeah. Ireland. And, oh, and, and uh, uh, that's still true, even though now they're trying to tell us that, you know, this land that they previously told us was not entitled or was a waste of money and waste of resources to kind of try to give it facilities or whatever that uh, now they can tell us that, that we can put 10 million people in there in the in the bogs of mayo you know uh, this sort of nonsense that you get from them you know uh, like I, I i have come up with various proposals over the years like i you know which you know they're 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 still out there if you want to dig them out but uh, i remember 20 30 years ago nearly i i proposed that we install a uh, bullet trains throughout Ireland, which would reduce this, in a sense, in effect, reduce the size of the island to really to so a point where you know you could reach any point of it within forty-five minutes from one from any other point. And I, I felt that would radicalise the entire country, uh, so that the cities could become more balanced, the towns could become you know more balanced, and and that human existence in the in the on the island could become much more uh, coherent. But there was never any interest in doing anything uh, positive or constructive with regard to developing Ireland outside Dublin. It was all about, uh, you see, the, fundamentally, the Ireland is a post-colonial nation, which uh, is run by people of, of, who have no, this is always happens, inferior leaders who have no understanding of the culture or the history of the country. And, mm -hmm. and this has become increasingly true since we joined the EU back in 73. And uh, this is, means that we just give away our only way of uh, of then of functioning is to give away what we have that is worth valuable. So our resources. I mean, if you look what's happened with regard to fishing, in in, mm. in our, we're basically giving away most of our resources and things. It, it it became worse then after Brexit when there was a divvy up with the United Kingdom and so on, and we end up only having an entitlement of tiny single digit percentages of entitlement to certain fish in our own waters yeah. as compared to france having 70 odd percent or belgium having you know all these other countries have you know vastly bigger entitlements to fish in our waters than irish fishermen have this is monstrous yeah. this is monstrous. and it is particularly monstrous james in the context that we're now entering into where food will be, so food sovereignty will become paramount yeah. where the world is on the brink of, of a massive crisis because of the, the money collapses. And, and you're talking about the risk of real famine, real for shortages of food, uh, breakdown in, in supply chains, all of these things. And we really need to say to these guys, listen, I'll tell you what, why don't you just sod off? We'll run our own affairs from now, from here on. Because really, these people are destroying us. They're plundering our resources, the European Union, and they're destroying our, our infrastructure and destroy and sucking our people out. Last year, we brought in nearly a quarter of a million outsiders and 100,000 Irish young people applied for visas in Australia alone. In Australia alone. Yeah, you know, as you're saying that, these absolute stats. And like I've, I've heard, I'm a, it's a small enough, a well-known town, and um, not too far away there for me. I was out over Easter. I could hear a few of the conversations with the younger crowd, John. It was all Australia, Australia, Canada. Yeah, you know, a few comments yeah. were out of there. I mean, the, the last you're going to see of them is, it reminds yeah. me of, you know, the the 2000, the last controlled demolition there around 2008. Yeah. It actually started around 2007. And, and yet, if you say in the hearing of a politic, political creep or a journal liar, if you use the word replacement, They'll call you a racist. What else yeah. would it be? What else would you call it yeah. except for placement? Yeah. Oh, well, of course. But all of that only rubbish. I mean, the best form of defense is really attack and all of that nonsense. We've had so much subject matter. In fact, you just uh, just mentioned on a quick story, even there on, um, it was just over on the weekend, there's still some of these sorry saps that are actually out there. And I was going to visit this Asian to pick up a takeaway and they're extremely busy. So your man says 20, 25 minutes. So I actually know there there's a public house where the son of the proprietor is actually awake there to a lot of things going on. I said, that's fine. I'll nip across the way. Lashing raining, of course, as well, because with all this global warming and dry spells, you know, where it's been so dry there recently. Of course, it was lashing rain. So I didn't have far to go and I nipped across and uh, I was only in there about two minutes and 
there was this guy, maybe 65 there, 70, he walked into the pub and he said, to, he said, will you put on the, the rugby, the women's rugby match? I thought, oh, he's one of these fellas. He was standing beside me. No sooner and he, he was looking about, it was like a virtue signaling look. And he says, oh, it's great to watch them, isn't it? And I said, well, no, I don't really like it anyway. I like some women's sports. I said, do you know, I love actually women's tennis because I like, you know, women to be feminine and elegant and I like to see them playing. But these big, often overweight women crashing into each other, that's not something that I'm actually too keen on. And why not? Why not? And then I looked up and there was a couple of Africans with Irish jerseys on. So I said to him, Ah, oh, sure, look at a few Africans there playing. It's and he said, yeah, yeah, they're Irish. And I said, anyway, what do you think the criteria is there for being Irish? Oh, if you're born here. Now, here's an interesting one there, John. So I said to him, all right, all right. So what if 5,000, we'll say, Nigerians and, and sub-Saharan Africans there came in over the next week, all pregnant, and they all had kids? Would they all be Irish? They would be Irish. I said, well, you must have forgot about the referendum that we've actually had there. 20 years ago, the Joe Solly, that actually 79.17% of people even back then, you know, voted for a change there in the referendum to stop these anchor babies. So, and I just want to say then, John, finally, your man was all revved up anyway, and he must have went off there into the toilet. And I was, I like triggering these zombies anyway. Yeah. Well, see, on, that point, on that point, James, you see, yeah. it, it ought to be the case that yeah. somebody born in Ireland is entitled to claim uh, citizenship of ireland i believe that but you see what we're talking about here is not a normal situation this is not organic what's strategically happening targeted yeah to come in yeah. i mean we yeah. had i remember at the time there we covered it i mean michael mcdowell you've talked about him there well you actually had willie od around the time and then there was obviously hospital directors i can remember that were speaking out there was one of from the rotunda and said that we're seeing women that are touching down in ireland when their contractions have started. So that's totally different, dude. That was essentially... Yeah, this this, goes, to, this goes to the point, that, you know, of why we need to stress to people. Because, you know, you constantly run into this thing that people are terrified of being called names. And, yeah. and, and you know, you, there's no reason to be afraid of names anyway. But this is actually complete twisting of reality. When you are pretending that such an unnatural imposition of huge numbers is the same as one or two or a family or two coming uh, yeah. once, a, once a month to, to a particular town and saying, I like this town, I'd like to live here, I'm going to try, I'm going to open a shop, I'm going to do, you know, make some stuff, whatever, and do some carpentry, whatever it might be. That would be absolutely acceptable. Uh, mm. 350 people in the middle of the night unvetted without papers yeah. that is not acceptable and it's not the same thing more importantly so this is and i agree with your you mentioned before thomas aquinas uh, obviously his philosophy on it i think that's absolutely perfect there the way he maps it out but finally in the end of that anyway there was a few fellas there listening about but they had their heads down and when your man went off what a fella says to me before and um, before uh, i was actually going out and he said joey said that bollocks voted yes yes <laughs> yes, I well, like exactly. uh, you know. I mean, these they, 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 as we used to say down the west one time, you don't hear this phrase anymore, but you know, they do be in it, and 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 uh, uh, you know, it's it, that's about as much as you can say, they do be in it, you know, uh, like th these people are, are like whatever their, their thing is, they have this need to. Um, almost is a kind of a neurosis they to attack verbally uh, their fellow citizens uh, by way of you know showing off their virtue and and challenging people to to argue with them and then they'll feel even better you know like it's just such nonsense and of course all journalists it seems to me now who are still in the mainstream are like that and all politicians are like that but of course it's much more sinister than that because these people are making money out of they're the getting story. financially incentivized to be traders yeah. yeah yeah so that's the serious part of it like you know that it's incentivized and therefore they have an interest in keeping it going and then in, an interest in lying about those of us who are resisting it hmm. yeah i mean well it looked absolutely nailed we talked about this several times but look at thankfully on that matter they're becoming thinner and thinner on the ground anyway thankfully yes. so yes i think so feel, yeah I think I think we're in a new phase, and and uh, yeah. you know, in a certain sense, 
I think if it, if this was an entirely an internal matter, I would feel very confident now that we could beat these guys. But of course, it's not. It's orchestrated from without, and that's yeah. something we need all the time to be kept to keep in mind. That when we're talking about mass migration or trans or any of those phenomena, we're talking about orchestrated phenomena. They're not naturalistic. They're not organic, and yeah. that needs to be remembered. And no matter how much we may be kind of preoccupied with fighting uh, at the at the front line against some blue hair blue haired you know horror, you know that blue haired horror isn't really our enemy. That yeah. that she or he is just a proxy for our enemy uh, and then of course that's important to remember and it's important to recognize that there is an enemy behind her and she is or he is uh, carrying out that will the will of that enemy and therefore is treasonous but nevertheless we need to think about the person behind because the the the, the proxies can be replaced they can we can you know they're hydra head we can cut off the head but then another one pops out you know and and that's that's our problem really uh fundamentally that it's not it's not a local, uh, you know, what has Patrick having a local bother? Uh, it's it's something much larger than that. It's I, I think, uh, yeah, I think you're on the ball. And do you know what it is? It's getting that balance. You're talking about the useful idiots that are really out there, and of course, so in some ways, you'd feel a little bit sorry for them. There, you know, they're being they're being used. Their free flowing anxiety, their lack of really being able to fit in. They believe that this is their chance, and of course, and, they don't and, know how to communicate it without these. Uh, and yeah. many of them, James, many of them, James, and I say this quite sincerely, they're not well. Yeah, no, no, one hundred percent, and and that's and they've been the same. They've been conditioned to be not well. It's like a diet they've been mm. given. If you can imagine, they've been fed on. If you're thinking about food, they're drinking coke and cans of monster and pizzas and chocolate. So I mean, this is it. You also are yeah. You can soon. Yeah, I'm not suggesting we give them a free pass on that account, like you know. But but just remember that they're you know. They, they didn't start this. They're they're only you know as you say useful idiots, or I, I would say useless idiots actually. But okay. uh, uh, in in most instances, uh, but uh, the, the the sinister forces behind them are our real enemy, and we need to constantly remember that. And because you, know, yeah. you know we do all of us, I've included myself, we lapse into this way of talking about some issue as though it were all only what we see in front of us and of course it's not at all trans is not what we see in front of us on that issue migration is not what we see in front of us these hordes of people swarming around our little villages now abusing people and calling people names Th that's not organic that's implemented by by fiat it's orchestrated to, by the misuse of state coercion whether implied or real it doesn't really matter but the very fact that our police force is enabling this is itself a criminal action and has, in my mind, put the police force on Garda Shikona beyond uh, beyond the pale insofar as uh, being regarded as a legitimate force is concerned. Yeah, absolutely. And without people going down too many rabbit holes, I was going to say that it's about finding really the balance. We can check out a lot of these hidden dark hands out there, supranational organizations, all the way from Bilderbergs to the World Economic Forums to UNs to, you know, banks of settlements and trilateral commissions and everything. But it's finding that balance. We know that the mid managers there, we can hold them to account, especially in your local county council. Um, I look at Agenda yeah. 21 slash Agenda 2030. It goes from global, provincial to local. You can see the changes in your area, and it does start really with a local um, action. Yeah. Well, one of the things I intend to do when I get to the European Parliament is to start a campaign to make it illegal for any politician in Europe to be a member of the World Economic Forum, to make that a criminal offence. Yeah. Get off. That, that will be a campaign I will launch immediately on election. And uh, you know, there are lots of stuff like that that we need to think about and talk about. And I mean, I'm, I'm very open to ideas that people may have because I don't know everything or even very much, you know, a lot of the time, you know. So I'm still learning. <coughs> Sorry. Yes. And you know, John, even actually to say that, it just shows my guest on today for the 18th time, the wonderful John Waters. Uh, he's my favorite guest from so many people. They want him back. And again, it's 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 an education. You were saying it is for myself, but also how humble I want to give this and give John that he was calling out a no-no. John was calling it out. 
when not many people were putting his head above the parapet and saying he's got a feeling. And what does the gentleman then, John, say then after it? He starts to focus in on he didn't know that it was going to be a landslide. But the bottom line is you called it, John. So Well, I, I, fought, it, I fought it as best I could on different channels, including your own, you know, and talked about all the diff different issues. I was just saying there before I went, <clears throat> my breath went the wrong way. Uh, I, I, I'm learning all the time. You know, I'm a student of this. This, I, you know, I'm trying to figure out what's going. I'm still building my dry stone wall, and it's kind of, you know, no more than half completed. You know, you know, and because you know, I'll be, I, I can't, you know, I, and I listen to every point of view that I come across and and try to fit it in. You know, and I never discard anything you know, or very little anyway. Uh, uh, you know, off the cuff, I I let it lie and say, okay, I'll go back to that because very often things. That I maybe a year ago couldn't comprehend or couldn't fit in. They're making more sense, you know, uh, as I go on. And so, you know, I think that's what's important. I think what's important in ter in the context of these elections, and and it will be important in the Dáil elections, which will come within whatever a year. Um, by the way, I hear that that Klaus Schwab has issued an injunction that there should be no election in Ireland uh, this year until they get their migration policy. Uh, nailed down and completed their, their, so that tells you what's what these guys are thinking about uh but I, I you know i think that the elections you know again you see really it's a question of making available to the voter that box in which the no x fitted last time so that you're not of the establishment you're not of the political parties you're not of any of the existing um uh, personnel who sat on their hands through 2020 and 21 and 22 and 23 and all the horrors that went uh, down in those years yeah and that uh, you know you, we get your people who actually understand the reality of what's been happening uh, in in whatever degree and uh, are able to react on that basis not on the basis of the logic that is proffered by the media or the political establishments and and that's what i want to do to actually go on just start talking immediately as if it is quite obvious which it is to me that we are in the midst of a coup that we are in the midst of a totalitarian takedown that we are being you know, reduced to serfs in a neo-feudal reality and that we are not taking it we're not standing up for it because I think that anybody who understands this will agree with me. This cannot be allowed to happen. You know, absolutely. And I think a lot of the people that have, you know, recently starting to engage with reality will realize that because they would have had your Leo's alleged or, oh, Simon back in 2020. Oh, God, he's following on orders from the World Homicide Organization. That must be all in our benefit. Of course, then we saw with, especially with the hospitals and one of the worst uh, things that took place was what took place in the in the nursing homes and people couldn't see their dead and dying and with funerals. And, and of course, then they contacted then local politicians and got completely stonewalled or what they said got disregarded. Or a lot of people that spoke up after being affected directly, it got shoved in their face and they got called a conspiracy theorist. They are not going to go back to sleep anymore. Uh, that's for damn sure. That's right. And, and, and uh, you know, the people, all the people who, who died, 20,000 people, excess deaths. You know, we, we were told at the very beginning of this. So it was it was like almost like a... You know, and it was said in a, in a such a way as, well, you're going to have to wait for this. Uh, you know, the proof of this would be the excess death, the proof of the gravity of the pandemic and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Well, now the figures are in. Can we please now have that inquest that you promised, that post-mortem that you promised uh, as to why this is happening? And then when you actually listen to them and you realize that they are proffering any number of, uh, and variety of reasons why this excess death figure exists, except the one that we know to be the issue. And yeah. that tells me that they know too, that that yeah. one thing is the actual well, reason. Isn't it just as well for them that there's so many of these new distractions and genuine atrocities that are distractions that are taking place and unfolding both in Ireland and indeed around the world for them to get fixated well, on and conveniently there uh, forget. Well, for, for 25 months now, the West, the authorities, so-called authorities without authority in the West, have been trying to start a world war. And the reason for that is very simple, because they need to clean the blackboard. And, and a, a, a war is essentially a, a lawless zone. 
and then that will always zone. You can rectify everything and set all the clocks at zero, so that people will then, when when we go back to something resembling normality, will have forgotten or will have set aside their grievances with regard to the past, because no matter how horrible they were and are. In that context, after the, the 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 horrors that have just ensued, they will be they will fade into pers- a certain perspective, and 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 this is what these cro- crooks and and creeps are counting on, that that a war will wipe the blackboard and they won't have to be accountable for anything. Yeah, well, they might actually be onto something there. Let me just because uh, well, look at briefly a roundup. It is sort of. It's it's on the it's on the corporate news. It's been spoken about there. Obviously, we can see in in Palestine. I know that we say uh, right before there was three Britons killed. That got I mean Sunak there the the uh, their little tea boy over there the Goldman Sachs uh, puppetition uh, over in England mentioned the fact that like it is an atrocity there. At least that was actually mentioned there on the likes of the BBC, but. Also, before that, that didn't get any mention was a crowd, a humanitarian WCK. There was a 35-year-old Polish guy that was among people that was killed, bringing 100 tons of food there to Palestinians. So they were wiped out when they were actually in talking to the IDF, said they were on the road. They were in what's called a de-conflicted zone. And uh, they also were driving in a vehicle there that uh, had a logo on it, and they were still taken out. So... Obviously, that we see the uh, the Iranian consulate there in Damascus there that was blown up. So tensions are being seriously ramped up at the moment. And something that we've talked about, maybe it's because it's nearly it's a lock, as the Americans say, with betting terminology that Putin is just ruling the roost in what's happening there that we all actually knew. But it's just coming to light now that just the military dominance over over that area and wiping out. Um, any of uh, any of Ukraine, what military there that they put out in the conflict zone that he just he has that's a lock and it's locked down. So they're trying their best. They're trying their best. They say when all else fails, bring them to war. Well, you know, it's a, it's interesting that whereas the Ukraine war up for you know um, a year and a half was you know a non-controversial war within the West. Gaza is not. Gaza is, is, has divided the establishments of the West uh, as much as the peoples of the West. And yeah. that's, you know, that's not accidental. You know, this is part of whatever the plan is. And uh, and it's interesting now when we see, and sometimes, you know, you, you wonder, are we just being gaslit again? You know, but mm. I, I watch, say, Sunak and, and see, and, and, and say, Vradker's intervention when he was in the United States at St. Patrick's mm. Day which was quite exceptional in a certain sense. I mean that in the sense unusual for him to actually break ranks with his superiors. And, and you know, I, I have no doubt that there's a connection between that and his departure. I'm not so sure whether that means that he already knew he was going or that this was the provocation which caused him to have to go. But I think there is a connection. Uh, uh, but equally, I'm, I'm watching, say, Sunak that you mentioned there. And in that context, you know, he's, he's taking this, a similar line and, and uh, or at least rumblings, making rumblings in a certain direction. But he also said recently, I think it was this morning or yesterday, uh, about the, the new hate speech law in, the, in Scotland. He, he gave quite a trenchant critique of that and of the importance of freedom of speech in society. That's right. But, so, so this is interesting. Now, you know, we in Ireland, it seems, that uh, James, that where we're going is in the context of the World Economic Forum, WEF, the reversal, the mirror image of few. So this is the battle for the, the rights of the few over the, the many, to steal the wealth and the, the, the lives and everything, the freedom of the many. Uh, that actually what we seem to be seeing now, and again, you, you have to leave open the possibility that this is all theatre, but let's just talk about it in this context, what's going on, that we seem to be coming down to the last layer of the creepy, the creepy. Uh, you know, we're getting the creepiest of the creeps. We're getting Harris, like a man who was elected on the 15th count in Wicklow, for God's sake, yes. you know, yes. uh, like as Taoiseach, to carry the, the name of Chieftain, which yes. was carried by De Valera and the Cosgraves and Johnny Costello and Sean Lamas and Charlie Hawley and Gareth Fitzgerald and so on and so on. And uh, that 
that, that there seems to be in that almost like, and it's clear that he is the most obedient of all to the world economic forum. He will do whatever it yes. is. He will, yeah. he will, he will jump out the window if they order him to. And I, I think so, yeah. Which we hope they they do really. <laughs> uh, yeah. But but uh, uh, you know, this is maybe now. There's a sense in this in this drama of Radcliffe even loath as I am to maybe even open up this box, that there's some redeeming quality of that man's character that he balked at something that he was asked to do and said no mm -hmm. and took whatever chances would be, you know, associated with that. This is just a theory. I, I don't know. And I'm not even convinced of it myself. But it's one Sounds a little bit too grandiose. It's a very rare, yeah. Chances are that's not the case at all. We know how craven and disreputable the guy is. But maybe... Well, and also yes, we do. We do. But I've always said, J James, not just in relation to politicians, but in relation to journalists, that there must come a moral breaking point somewhere. You know? Because otherwise we're on the way to Auschwitz. Mm, yeah. You know, and, and at some point along that path, every one of those guys is going to have to stumble. Mm, yeah. And, and, and look around him. And so uh, that's what I feel that, that uh, you know, maybe that's something that's going on in, in the undertoes of all of this now, that we're down to our last bunch of creeps and that the, the weffers are running out of steam. Now, you know, I have other theories as well. You know, as I say, if you don't like that theory, I have others. But, uh, you know, it, it seems to me that we're in the end game anyway. And that's why it's important for us all to talk out those who can. I, I said I was at a meeting there last week uh, in, 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 in Dublin, in Dunleary, and I actually I was asked about running, and I said, I think we should all run for election. Everybody. I don't mean, I mean, everybody in the entire country who is isn't who is over 18 should apply to be a candidate of some kind in some election in the near future so that we flood the system, we, we drown the system in humanity and force it into paralysis and force it into collapse, and then we can start again. Mm. Well, that might be our way to sort of political tabula rasa, yeah. So, and speaking there at all these disreputable politicians, yeah, I mean, we had, yeah, Harris, we were mentioned there, he was health minister there, and he was guiding in whatever, everything, all these lockdowns and all these different restrictions. Mm. But there's another guy there that's very fond of going to uh, Bilderberg meetings there and talking to people that he's left as well. And that's all Coveney, Coveney there, the uh, 2040 Coveney, which is quoted there famously as saying there when he was pushing out the message with Ireland 2040 that he wanted to double cities' polit uh, populations there outside of Ireland. And he actually had the cheek there to mention they said that half of the number of those filling these new cities that would double would not be born in Ireland. Yeah, well, I mean, Coveney is the, the political godson of Sutherland, Peter Sutherland, who famously said that, you know, the people of Europe would have to be brought, you know, by the nose, really, to the realisation that they were going to be replaced. That, that, you know, they, they're, they're, they couldn't possibly expect to, to, to retain the integrity of Europe as it was. Uh, people by uh, Europeans and and so on and and very really nasty stuff, and that that he you know, uh, Coveney learned that that man's knee, and uh, so you don't expect anything else except that. But what is remarkable is that now he too has prepared to to run away. He is prepared to run away because he, you know, and it's interesting because this was in a sense his moment. You would have thought. Uh, this was the moment he had to wait for, you know, painfully. It was like almost like, you know, Gordon Brown having to wait for Blair to run the East course, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, of course, that was a disaster as well. But, you know, from the point of view of, you know, like, say, if you look at someone like Michal Martin, uh, who was, you know, part of a completely failed, disastrous Fianna Fáil government and, uh, you know, everybody said, including me, this guy can never be Taoiseach, will never be Taoiseach. But he was because the conditions became so abysmal that, you know, he was the last man standing. And, you know, that's the same as true of Simon Harris now. Um, and Coveney obviously, obviously has a slightly high, higher standard than that. He wanted to, to be, to run a country. I, I, you know, I do think, it, you know, not that I'm trying to be fair to him at all, I, I, but, you know, it it seems to me, looking into politics now, that there must be a great sense of dismay among these people, no matter how 
dehumanized they are and they are uh, that that they're having to become these things t-shirt tarnished in a in a moment of such uh volatility and and yeah. and uh, you know uh, disarray and 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 chaos yeah and and cuz it's the last thing you would want you know to, on your cv or on your tombstone that you you were t-shirt you know when nobody else wanted the job because it was so appalling uh, I mean, you know, like that, that kind of happened within the Kenny in Fine Gael at the back, you know, 13 or 14 years ago when he became Taoiseach. Like the, he was the last person on earth that you would choose to be Taoiseach. Uh, and yet he became that because the, the party could not, had run out of personnel that were in any way eligible or suitable. And not that he was either eligible or suitable, but he was just there. And, and of course, chaos and catastrophe followed. And it's still going on. I mean, you actually think about it, James. I've been saying this recently, and as just as a kind of a, a litany, because I've talked about uh, a lot about what I call the autocolpe, autocolpe of 2011, when there was a, basically a self coup, Spanish word for self coup. Just think about the consequence. Look at what happened. Self coup is when a government takes steps to ensure, an incumbent government takes steps to ensure that it can never be replaced or removed, right? Mm. Now, just look what's happened in, in the last 13 years. Indy Kenny was war elected after the withdrawal of democracy now, Fintan O'Toole, Emma Dunphy and David McWilliams, which is another story which I have gone into in the past. And I have certain views of that, which can be reasonably intuited by, on the basis that, you know, they had years to prepare for this and then they said they hadn't enough time. Uh, anyway. Uh, so then we went on to 2016, and in, in the Kenny, after five years of destroying the country and selling out his people, he was trounced in the election of 2016, um, reduced by huge numbers of seats, nearly half. And But he, he, he remained in office through a deal, a sneaky deal, with Michal Martin, what was called uh, Confidence and Supply. I have no idea what that title means. What is it confidence in? What are they supplying? I don't know, and I don't care, but that's what they call it. And then the following year, Kenny stepped out again and Radcliffe stepped in. Again, no mandate whatsoever. No mandate. Uh, he was elected, at, had been elected in 2016 on the fifth count. And now he was Taoiseach without any Irish voter having any say in the matter whatsoever. Then we went on to 2020, another election, the one I ran in, and Radcliffe was trounced in that election and basically given the bums rush by the electorate. But because there was an emergency, he stayed on. Or because there wasn't, nobody could come to a conclusion as to how to, to go forward. There was only two options, actually. Either a coalition between Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael, which had been ruled out by both parties, therefore wasn't a valid option, really, electorally man and democratically. That was one. The other was another election. Instead, we got a caretaker government that went on for four months, mm -hmm. uh, in which the most draconian and unprecedented legislation ever introduced by an Irish parliament, by an Oireachtas, was introduced without any mandate, over the heads of the, over the, the constitution, transcending all of those principles, against the most fundamental principle in that constitution expressed in Article 28, which says that you can't declare an emergency except in war or armed rebellion. Mm -hmm. And there was no thing, such thing happening. Um, and then, uh, at the end of June, the, the arrangement that I spoke about, a coalition between Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael, which was not, being, which was not mandated, but you know, other than an election, it was the only option, and had been clear at, in, in February, in the middle of February, that that was the only option. Suddenly, they decided it's the only option. And we got Martin, again, unmandated uh, for the next, whatever, two, two years and a bit. Uh, then we got Fradker back again last year. And now Fradker is stepping aside and he's going to hand over to a man who got elected on the 15th count in Wicklow mm. yeah. in the last election. Now, this, uh, just, this is how far we are from a mandate of the public, of the electorate. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, we are well, well laid out there, John, yeah. This, this is the meaning of coup. Mm. This is the coup. They're basically saying to us, it doesn't matter what you say, it doesn't matter what you do, we're going to stay anyway and we're going to do what we want. Because if you look at the referendum, it's quite clear, every single party, if you looked at the figures that came through in that uh, thing, particularly 
Fianna Fáil, but you know, most of the parties, they were so they're clearly so out of touch with their own people, their own their own voters, that it's unreal. I mean, we're talking about several multiples of of, of percentages. Uh, the only parties which are close to be even Stephen in terms of the yes no uh, Labour Party and Fine Gael have approximately the same number of yes and no voters. The rest are completely like 80, I think Fine, Sinn Féin is actually something like 88% to 12. That's the that's the ratio of no to yes. Mm. So here we are, and we're supposed to be living in a democracy, and, mm. and this is going on over our heads, where you have government by fiat of external agencies and, and, and interests, while we have this charade, this drama of democracy. Now, I'm, I'm fully cognizant of the meaning of that and the, the significance of saying that in the context of running for election. And I'm con cognizant of the risks and the dangers, for sure, because I know how corrupt this country has become. And I know how desperate they are to stop anybody who has any alternative view about anything from even speaking, never mind actually going to the the European Parliament in, in Strasbourg or Brussels to speak. So uh, that's where we've come to. And yet these guys pray day and daily about European values and democratic values while they hire thugs to put onto the street to silence any voice that might dare to question them. Democracy. Well, well, you know, that's going to bring us on to, I think, maybe one of the last topics. If you want to bring up anything yourself, absolutely, of course, Kulak. Obviously, um, look, before I do that, again, support independent journalists, as you can see in the description I'm putting up. Uh, John, of course, is on his Unchained, and you can support John. Wonderful articles there. You can subscribe. And also, it's a buy me a coffee there, John has. I still have I have the same there also, and like a PayPal, okay? So uh, support what you love. There's no monetization, no paywalls in this, and even John's videos when he actually puts them up. Um, on his Unchained um, is access there to absolutely everybody. So support independent journalism. Thanks, everybody, for checking it out. Uh, we've gone up to about 260-odd there at one stage. So that's not that's not bad. John, I want to just get your take there. We've gone over the hour mark in Kulak. Absolutely wonderful numbers there around that borough, Kulak, turning up. Huge numbers of people um, going out there. And again, this is it's just wonderful to see. I did mention it there earlier on, but it is a real boost for morale, especially the fact that you're saying that these uh, tyrants are trying to put the jackboot of censorship down on people there. But it's yeah. obviously not having an effect there in uh, people still are, you know, they're mobilizing and it's absolutely well, wonderful. Yeah, well, what we see here is, is what we kind of knew was that the, the, the working people, of our cities and our of, of our countryside are, are braver than the so-called educated classes uh, who are too self-conscious uh, and too prone to being sensitive to insults from too people egotistical, that, yeah. yeah mm. from people that they you know consider their peers for some reason you know somebody in RTE and the, if the idea of being denounced from the pulpit of RTE is you know by Joe Duffy by the Bishop the Reverend Joe Duffy. Uh, <laughs> It's such an appalling uh, thing for them that that they will do almost anything to avoid it, uh, you know. Uh, and the people of Kulak just don't care about those things. They don't give who you know f's, mm. and, and that's the difference. And it's got to do with you know courage, and it's got to do with clarity, and it's got to do with intelligence. Actually, uh, you know, much as the 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 the, the so-called elites might protest at that kind of idea, but you know, their education is very very shallow. And very limited and very slim, a slim band of knowledge on a specialized subject is not an education. Whereas if you're actually having to work in the world and make your way and provide for your family and, and with your hands and your, your brains every day, and by manipulating the world, you know, the, by, by engaging with the world, by a tactile relationship with the world, you know, that is a particular kind of intelligence gathering that is superior by far to book learning. You know, book learning is important and as an augmentary uh, element of that, uh, but it is not the primary source of human knowledge. If you look at a child, a child learns about the world through feeding things, by picking things up, by throwing them at other things, by by putting them in his mouth, by, you know, uh, by listening to them, rat ratting them. And that's the way we should learn about the world as we go along, as much as through books, and study we should do it by in constant engagement and that's where i think the kulaks of this world have the edge 
in democratic terms because they understand this stuff in intuitively and implicitly that this is really existential and it has really got to do with their future of their lives. They are they are already fighting for their unborn children to live in this country and they know it. Yeah. And of course, you see, the massive thing, the biggest of all, of course, is that it's the demographic change in the in the area. They can see it. These close knit communities that as far back as maybe only 15 years ago was pretty much they were all they were all old dubs. It was Anto and Deco and you know Bridie and Miriam chatting and sharing milk and sugar. And next minute, there's all of these foreign you know foreigners that have you know love, no no affinity for for the land that yes, are walking yes. out with a huge sense of entitlement. And of course, then they they can see that the establishment protects them, makes them into VIPs, wraps them in cotton wool. And we've talked all about that, the psychological strategies behind cultural Marxism and demoralization, but. This is it. So it's coming to a boiling point that people are saying, no, no more. They can see that's, basically their own society imploding around them. That's that's the point, exactly, James, that they're looking at this. And it isn't any hostility to people per se. It's what has been stolen from them, which is the peace and the, the familiarity of their own place, the place that they have contributed to building together for their children to live in peaceably also, they hope. And to see this being, tr being thrown to the wolves and being invaded by indifferent outsiders who have been coached in calling them names mm -hmm. and in treating them as interlopers in their own country. And they look at this and they say, that this isn't right. It's just not right. I know it's not right. How could it be right? If this was done in reverse, if we were doing this to these other people who are here in their place, mm -hmm. we, would be to we would be excoriated from every pulpit in the, pulpit in the world or racism and yet they come here and we're told we're the racists mm. get real yeah you know so uh, this is what it is it's a complete reversal of moral uh, you know uh, of ethical uh, uh, understandings mm. uh, whereby the people who are being assaulted and attacked and deprived of their inheritance of their birthright are treated as if they're the aggressors yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's a total switch up. Yeah, the victims are cast as the perpetrators and the perpetrators, they're the victims. Uh, you know, absolutely. So that's culture, uh, that's culture of Marxism. That's the definition, what you just said. That's it, wrapped up. Yeah, you look to empower a group while your main aim is to disempower another group and that's the indigenous Irish. Yes, uh, Irish. You, you disable yeah. them, you disable the other group by virtue of the colour of their faces or their sexual, their sex or whatever, their nation, their ethnicity, they have no points. Uh, whereas the people with a different shade of face or a different um, kind of sexual proclivity or whatever it might be, they have an exalted status by virtue of having maximum points on this perverted score. And, and that has to stop. We have to say no to this. And it is not wrong to say no to this. It is right. Yeah unashamedly yeah absolutely be unashamed about it look at before yeah yeah we wrap things up again john look at as we started off you know with the elections there in europe you know so do you want to just maybe bow out there with some some reference there to that i'd say you're looking forward to it you're hyped you're hyped about it because as you can see the the support the overwhelming support and goodwill is starting to feed towards you and i'd say john that must be really energizing and and we're only just getting going baby <laughs> it, that's that's the way I feel. I mean, I, I'm quite, I'm very, I'm, I'm quite surprised by it. And as I say, it's a kind of surreal situation for me because I'm in the midst of this other uh, situation, a legal situation that I have to deal with in the next few weeks. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of distracting me. Uh, but I am obviously paying whatever attention I need to to keep things on the rails for the next few weeks, uh, and then to go to it wholeheartedly uh, for those last five weeks. Um, but uh, uh, again, uh, you know, the, the, the it's very interesting to look at the map, you know, of Ireland and see that that constituency, which goes, you know, around right around uh, uh, what we call Northern Ireland, uh, the six counties, uh, down to Galway on one side, and right across the Midlands over to 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 Loud on the coast, on the on the east coast. It's extraordinary. Yeah. It's, it's like it's well over half of the territory of the republic in territory terms, not on the population terms, obviously, but in, in territory terms. And it's the place that I grew up in, you know, it, it's a place that moves me beyond any other place on earth. 
in so many places in there from 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 Galway up to to, to Mayo to 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 Donegal and back down via Sligo Leitrim to Roscommon where I was born, uh, uh, going to Longford and all those places up through Mead to West Mead when I when I was going to Dublin or whatever. Like yeah. these are so familiar to me. These places I know the villages like and and uh, I know the names of them off by heart, and uh, so you know, much more so, far more so than what I did in 2020, which was to run in a constituency where I was essentially in exile, really, uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, who came here out of necessity back in the in the 80s, you know, uh, and uh, uh, remained because that's where I needed to be. Uh, but I'm not so much here now. I'm down in, in Sligo more, as much as I can in these days. And uh, I so I think of that as my 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 home now. But my heartland is is all of that area, you know, and or most of it. And I hope to make that connection in the next couple of months with those people, uh, make it clear that you know they don't have to agree with everything I say. That that's not necessary. But what they have to do is listen to what I have to say about where I see the problems of Ireland and what I see as what we need to do as a people to recover our country from these evil forces and to restore it to a a healthy life by its own lights, not by corporate lights or not by supranational lights, not by the EU lights, but by the Irish lights, right? Irish lights. I want us to follow the Irish, the lights of Irish, uh, the Irish soul and the Irish heart. And uh, I think that should be possible. That's not too much to ask of our pu- public representatives. I mean, I'm nearly, I'm going to be 70. I mean, se- I'll be in my 70th year by the time the election happens. So I'm not a young man anymore. Uh, uh, but I want to do this, at least this one time, to show the way that we may be able to do this, that our own people can actually take up that energy that we discovered in ourselves on March the 9th and restore our country using it to good effect. Lucid speech, mellifluous tones. If we were playing in the All-Ireland final, it'd be two goals and six points. Wonderful <laughs> stuff. We're on tour tonight. Over the bar. <laughs> we're going to bow. Thanks to everybody. Thanks, James. <laughs>